Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isratel here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is going to be how to help to be the best personal trainer you can be. So we have 10 tips that I think are fairly important for personal trainers so that they can do their best. If you're a personal trainer, then you might get a decent amount of value out of this video. I was a personal trainer for a very long time. So was Nick Shaw, the co-founder of Renaissance Periodization. And so were tons of our coaches and, and tons of the folks uh, that we associate with. I used to be a professor, actually, I guess now a professor again, but one of the courses I used to teach for a long time was a personal training course, like how to be a good personal trainer. So uh, some insight here, if you're not a personal trainer, this might be a valuable video anyway, because you might wanna be a personal trainer later. And even if you never have any of those plans, if you ever hire a personal trainer, you can sort of go through a checklist to be like, are they doing any of these things? And if they are, that's really awesome. And if they're not, eh, maybe you wanna look around for somebody else or drop some not so subtle hints. So here's the deal. This is all about being as good as you can be as a personal trainer. So the underlying stuff we're not gonna talk about is like no sports science and exercise science so you can actually administer a good job, like know how to program, okay? Number one goes without saying. This is a bit more of the subtle nuances of how to deliver your services. So here we go. Tip number one is to be warm and welcoming. Okay, tons of people that show up to have personal trainers, they're really kind of freaked out and they don't know where to start, right? And almost everyone is a little bit apprehensive and anxious when they come to the gym for the first time or when they hire a trainer for the first time. Because the gym is a scary place. Like you're one of these wild animals that's jacked and lean and you're you're the sort of, you know, the lion in the jungle, but everyone that shows up is like, holy crap, like I don't really belong here. It's very intimidating. If you as a personal trainer are intimidating as well, yeah, there could be like some bonus points for you to recruit some clients because they think, oh, wow, this person really knows stuff. But when, at least when they're your clients and probably just all around the gym anyway, because that's how you track clients, is if you're warm and welcoming and and super, super nice to people and just sort of welcome them into fitness, then they're gonna be much more likely to be recruited by you and or to stick around because they're just like, wow, this is so great. Like this person makes something that's really scary to me, which is why, by the way, they paid for a personal trainer. They make it easy and they make it fun and I, I don't feel intimidated nearly as much. Really, really, really good idea, right? Number two, you gotta listen to what the client wants. It's their goals, it's their body. If someone tells me, hey, listen, I just want a jacked upper body, I don't care about my legs, I might ask them a few questions to make sure they have their sort of ducks in a row thinking wise on that, but I'm not gonna be like, fuck that, bruh, you know what I'm saying, squat till you drop, never skip leg day, hashtag, whatever. Like, that's nonsense. It's totally fine if someone wants jacked upper body uh, and, and legs that are made for endurance. Maybe they do that, or maybe they just don't care about their legs. Or, you know, for females, uh, let's say you're a female personal trainer and you're watching this video and you have a female client that's like, I don't want, you know, any upper body size. I mean, you can explore that issue gingerly and gently, but at the end of the day, some people just don't want it. And it's not your job, number one, to impose your value system on theirs and say, well, you, you know, you have to be a sort of promulgation of modern feminine aesthetics and you have to have muscle in your body because that's what women are doing nowadays. There's a lot of value to that, but that's not value you can impose on somebody else. You can, of course, explore those topics, especially later when you get to know them better. But at first glance, you really just kind of have to do generally what they say. Now, it is on you to hem in what's realistic and what's not. Okay, clients can say like, I want 50 inch pecs. You could be like, oh, uh, all right. Well, I, I can't actually deliver that to you. It's like getting an iPhone and then calling Apple and be like, this doesn't fly me to the moon. Like, uh, can I get a phone that flies me to the moon? They're gonna have to be like, well, you see, these phones aren't that powerful yet. So you have to hem in what's realistic and be very informative so you don't make promises you can't keep. If a client says, I wanna lose 50 pounds in three months, you're gonna have to give them the, the, the real talking of their lives, gingerly, gently, welcomingly, of course. But you gotta be like, look, you know, like he, we might be able to do 15 and then see how we can go from there. It's still gonna be really tough. Number three, you have to develop a basic roadmap of how to get them to their goals, okay? If you don't have a plan as a trainer, holy shit, is the client in trouble. Can you imagine like, you know, you join the Space Marines and you're like, you're serving under like Sarge and he's got a cigar and like a bunch of dead alien tattoos. He's killed tons of aliens. And you're like, you know, you're like dropping into planet beta nine and everyone's cocking their space guns and like, woo. And you're like, Sarge, what's the plan? He's like, there's no plan. <laughs> Hit the ground and shit happens. You're like, fuck, I'm going to die. You know, that's insane. The person leading you, the person ostensibly who knows things should probably have some kind of plan. So if a client turns to a personal trainer and is like, hey, so what are we doing today? Personal trainer is like, you know, we're going to play it by feel like, holy crap. So you got to have some sort of plan, medium term plan, 
long-term plan for how we're going to get where we're going to get. You know, we're going to lose three pounds every four weeks and get you to a fat loss goal. We're going to train this much, so on and so forth, right? And you should probably give your clients the high level of what the plan is, just so they know that they have the sort of warm comfort of a plan existing around them. Not that they want the details. Do not do the following. Don't be like, well, technically speaking, we're gonna accumulate with the following progressive microcycle. Don't, don't do that shit. They have no idea what you're tra talking about. Also, they don't care. Like, I used to have a tax guy who did my taxes that was like, so what we're gonna do is like, well, the fuck, please just take this money, do my taxes, don't lie to anybody. I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know taxes, that's why I'm paying you, right? They don't wanna know the nitty gritty. Now, if they do, they'll just ask you, but you just wanna give them the general flow. Like, hey, like, you know, we're gonna be doing some progressively harder training over the next several weeks, and here's what we're gonna do with our diet. What do you think? And they love that sort of thing. It gives them a feel of ownership a little bit and that security that you have a plan for them. On the ownership side and the getting things done side, notice I mentioned nutrition, right? Nutrition is very often overlooked, but is a huge, huge component. If you just train people and they come to you, because remember, people don't come to you for you to train them. Common myth, LOL. I'll get to what I mean in just right now. They don't come for training. They come to look differently. Because 99 out of 100 clients are there to look sexier. <laughs> Plain and simple. Whatever they think that is. Maybe not just sexier, but just better. Just like how they want to look. Adonis and shit, right? They don't come there for training specifically. If you were like, Psst, come here. I've got this like magic wand that I can wave. You don't have to train at all. You just get the body of your dreams. They're not going to be like, oh, no, no. I'm here to use the pre-core hack spot. <laughs> They're not going to say that. They're going to be like, well, wave that fucking wand at me, God damn it. <laughs> is, this, is this a matter of money? I just pay extra money. So at the end of the day, they're paying to look better. The thing is most clients, almost all, have no idea of the relative importance of training versus diet to results. And we all know diet's hugely important. And you can train into the ground and won't accomplish a damn near thing aesthetically, visually, because it's too much fat or there's not enough calories are coming in, there's not enough muscle, so on and so forth. So you should probably have at least an exploration of a discussion of diet pretty soon into your training progress. Maybe not right away, like someone like, signs up for your training, you're like, what are you doing with diet? Like maybe a couple of sessions in, you'd be like, so uh, how are you feeling? How's your training? Like, pretty good. You're like, how's your diet? Is it the, you know, you feel like you're eating pretty well to support this? Nine times out of 10 again, they'll be like, dude, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing with my diet. Please help. <laughs> and then you extend your dietary services, which is really, really awesome. Number four, ease into the training. There's a pressure for all of us to try to scale the fuck out of clients and try to show them that we know what they're doing by making them super sore. It's not an accomplishment. You just push someone close to failure repeatedly with high volume, they'll get sore, they'll get fucked up, they'll get really tired. Um, what you want to do is build a long term. You want to communicate these to your clients as well. Because anytime a client says, like, I don't feel like we're training hard enough, you're like, oh shit, you didn't open up the can of worms now because the next workout they die, right? That's always easy to do, but you don't have to quite do it. What you want to do is ease in and of course make the workouts challenging, but progressively more challenging over time. Ease into the training specifically to focus on technique. If you can build a really good technical mastery, habit, pride in your clients, that they have an ownership of their technique, they start doing bench presses correctly, squats correctly, pull-ups correctly, first of all, your job is easy as fuck because you just tell them great job and you sort of push them a little bit. You don't have to correct 50 things at the same time because you did that at the front end. If you never teach them technique and just try to train them hard, you'll have this like weird juggling act where six months into the training, their technique sucks, but backing off now means you're training them too easy. Start with technique first because remember a lot of people that are new to personal training, especially to pro uh, sort of proper personal training, they're going to get great results anyway, even training not as hard as they possibly could. Now, of course, point number five is once you get them the technique decent level, they sort of earn more load as they demonstrate good technique. Eventually the load gets pretty high, the reps and reserves start to fall and the volume starts to go up. It's fun, but it's more and more intense. And another thing, just real quick, it's not on this list, tell them you're doing that, okay? So they'll leave a workout on Monday and they'll be like, ooh, that was great. Look, all right, see you next Monday, it's gonna be a little tougher. And they're gonna be like, uh, okay, right? Whereas if next Monday they come up and it's tougher, they're like, what the hell did I do something wrong? Are you punishing me? People legit don't know this kind of stuff. And, and you'll say to them, the workouts on average over time, we'll get some easy days and some breaks are gonna get harder and harder and harder. And they're like, oh my God, how does that work? Like, well, that's because you're gonna get in better and better and better shape. You don't think like people walking around in amazing shape just do easy workouts and almost everyone will be like, nah, yeah, you're right, I have this coming. But it's something good for them to know. Number six, it's an interactive process. So watch to see if they prefer something more than something else and watch for and ask for preferences and irritations. So for example, if someone, every time you have them do hack squats, they're like, I hate this exercise. And when you have them do high bar squats or leg presses, they're like, I love this, this is great. 
Do you have to do hack squats as much as high bar squats and leg presses? No, they accomplish roughly the same thing. You can trade in hack squats on occasion just for variation or maybe even just lunges or something and do the other exercises more. What if a client on pull downs gets like a click in their shoulder and it hurts more and more uh, versus on assisted pull-ups with certain grips, they feel completely awesome. They just get a huge lap pump. But are you really just going to keep pushing pull downs on them? Maybe later you'll re-explore pull downs with different grips and different cadence and so on and so forth. But for the short term, give them more of what seems to fit them best, right? And that includes rec exercises. It includes rep ranges as well. You have a client do sets of five in the squat and they're like, my knees hurt. I don't feel shit in my quads. You have them do a set of 12 and they're like, my quads are on fire. My knees feel great. Eh, you know, that's a lesson for you to learn. It's not a top down only thing. It's an interactive process where you watch and ask now, have some skepticism because sometimes people just say everything sucks because everything sucks sometimes, but at least try to get into the nuance of like asking about joint stuff versus muscle stuff, so on and so forth. Point number seven, a lot of clients are there for general fitness and just to look as sexy as possible in the shortest amount of time. And a lot of clients can't give you a ton of time. They'll give you two or three sessions a week. They also muscle size wise relative to their uh, lungs and heart and, and vasculature is not so impressive. So while you are jacked and shit, you might need three minutes break between sets to make them productive. They might not. They might need one minute. And to maximize the stimulus to time ratio, the amount of oomph you're giving them for how little time they spend at the gym, you might really want to consider antagonist compound supersets. That's something like doing pull-ups, resting for like just a little bit, and then doing some push-ups, and then resting for 30 seconds to a minute, and then repeating that cycle, right? Like a set of something, the agonist muscle set of something or muscles completely uninvolved, like you can do a uh, push press superset to squat or something like that. You do multiple sets of those, it covers huge swaths of their body, gives them more than enough stimulus to accomplish what they want, burns a shitload of fat too or calories. It feels super hard. They get out of, uh, of breath, which usually most people like, it makes them feel like they're getting value out of the training. And it maximizes the amount of effort they can put in the gym in the short time possible. So give that a thought. I go so far as to say that for most uh, personal training clients, unless they have very specific goals that aren't met by this, compound antagonist supersets are really sort of the bread and butter of training. That's how almost everything works. If I was a personal trainer again, Almost everyone, we get compound antagonist supersets, uh, rows, rowing and vertical pulling to pushing, uh, leg stuff to arm stuff, stuff like that. And not just antagonist here is a bit of a misnomer, just uninvolved muscles, right? So when one group of muscles is working, compound usually is best because it involves a lot of muscles. The other group is resting and so on and so forth. And you do take breaks every now and again, but only when you need. Tough stuff, works amazingly well, and combines cardio and weights workout into one. Really is the tip of the spear as far as most personal training is concerned. Number eight, track their progress. All right, track their strength, track their work capacity for how many reps they can do per set and not fall off in reps too much. Track their body composition in some general way, at least maybe belt measurements. Maybe you do skin folds, maybe you have them go get a DEXA or a bod pod every now and again. Two good things about tracking. One, you can tell if your shit is working and you can see how to work it better. And two, it gives the clients an understanding that you're making objective progress. Like sometimes our mind plays tricks on us and you may like sort of feel like you look the same as a client. Three months later, you're like kind of like, okay, I don't know what happened. Like I look similar, but maybe I'm a little leaner. You do belt measurements or just waist circumference and you're like, huh. I lost three and a half inches off my waist. Holy crap. But I guess my thighs don't seem to be any smaller get them into a bod pod or a DEXA, is like you've gained seven pounds of muscle and lost like five pounds of fat. They're like, well, that explains why my weight is up two pounds. But like, holy crap, I'm doing it, I'm succeeding. Whereas before they might like, eh, might not really be able to tell. Now you don't do this super often as far as body comp is concerned, but tracking progress in general is great. Even just telling them. So like you say like, hey, you just squatted 135 for 10. They're like, oh yeah, I guess. Is that good? Be like, well, when we started, you squatted 65 for 10. That's not just gonna go in one ear and out the other for most people. They're gonna like, they're gonna bask in that. They're gonna be like, holy crap. And they get to get home to their husband and he's gonna be like, how was personal training? And they're like, I'm fucking killing it in there. Apparently, I didn't even know my own strength. And they fucking Darth Vader, like lift up their husband, like fool, the last time you, you know, that's like a minor benefit of a side effect. Shit happens, right? That's not your concern. So number nine, check in often with them. Now, there's a ginger way to put this, but you basically are like, hey, like, how do you think we're doing in here? What do you think about your progress? What do you think about your results? And what do you think about our goals, right? Because you're gonna confirm from earlier your goals with them. You're gonna be like, hey, this is the goal, right? And they'll be like, yes, I want this. I want 15 pounds by Thanksgiving. And sometimes they have different goals. 
Like they lose 10 pounds, they're like, fuck, I'm shredded. I want to get jacked now. And they may tell you that, or they may kind of just like, people have a momentum thing and an authority thing in which they're like, oh, I committed to this, so I better do it. And they just don't get in there like, fuck, I wish I was getting jacked, but I'm getting lean or and I don't care anymore. Every now and again, if like once every few weeks, you're like, hey, like, how are things doing? We think by results, this and that on track. A lot of times they'd be like, dude, I fucking love it. This is great. And those are the clients that, you know, you're going to keep them for a while and they're going to refer tons of other people to you. But sometimes they're like, yeah, you know, I'm glad you asked. Like, do we still have to keep getting leaner? Because I kind of want to get jacked. And you explore that territory with them. Like, okay, like, you know, you're going to get a little softer, but you're going to get really big and uh, much more muscular. Is that okay? It's going to take some time, a few months of dedication. And if they're like, eh, nah, fuck that. I don't want to get softer. JK, you know, it's just a moment of weakness on the diet. Let's just finish the Thanksgiving. Cool. But they might be like, no, to totally. I'm into all that. Then you switch gears, right? Because remember, you're there as a singular purpose. You are a service provider to them. Okay, you do whatever it is they want, you get as close to that as is safe and reasonable. That's it. As if, if what they want has shifted, you got to shift along with them and you got to make sure you're on the right track, at least perceptively getting them there. Also, bonus points. This is kind of lame. This is not why we do this, but it is a thing. If you if you truly give a shit and you ask about them like you truly give a shit, because you do, um, that makes people feel nice. You know, like it, it, it's like, you, you you get on the airline or whatever, you sit down in your seat and a uh, flight attendant is like, are you doing, everything is okay? Are you comfortable? Like, whatever. Sometimes you're like, whatever, get away from me. I'm, I'm trying to sleep. Uh, but like most of the time, you're going to feel like at least a tiny feeling of like, oh, well, that's nice. You know, it's nice that they asked me that. Uh, you know, most clients aren't going to be like, <laughs> you're like, hey, uh, what do you think about our program? Like, get out of my face. I'm training. Like, what? Wait, I'm training you. What the hell's going on? So it's nice. It's at the very minimum. It's nice. Lastly, the entire process is this. You hit Target distinct goals you've determined with them and vetted to make sure they're safe and effective and realistic. Hit those goals. Accomplish them. An important point. Let them bask in them. Fucking tell them you are giving them props. You're like, dude, Janice, you fucking did it. You lost the 15 pounds. You weigh 145 today. Like, because sometimes people are like, oh, okay, when 145, it's like little kids look at you, like if see if they're hurt or if they should be proud. You're like, yes. And she's going to be like, oh, yeah, I did. I, you're right. I did it. And I can't believe it. Like, that's awesome. You want people to feel great about it because this is fitness and you want it to be a long-term thing. And just on a really just sheer human emotional level, like they fucking accomplish something. Feel fucking good about it. Because a lot of people will accomplish something and it'll just be like, meh guess on to the next. Like, no, 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 Enjoy. Enjoy because that feeds into the next. If all of your goals previously that you remember accomplishing also came with a ton of positive emotions, it's going to feed into passion. And you're like, man, goal achieving is just a great thing. If you've achieved a ton of goals and after everyone, you're like, nah, whatever, I ain't shit. Like a lot of times you're just going to lose steam and quit because why the hell are you doing this anyway, right? Once they've passed a little bit, let reset the goals to whatever it is, again, that you guys continue to negotiate between you and then repeat the process, right? On to the next realistic goal. They accomplish it, you bask, and of course, on their way, you give them props when they're doing a good job. Gently remind them that they could be better on track if they're not, during, et cetera, et cetera. And then they accomplish, it's all good, and that way it's a sequential goal accomplishment process. Sooner or later, they're way better shape. They love training with you. Unless they get hit by a bus, they're not firing you. Or they like move to like Dallas or something. Who the fuck would move to Dallas, right? Unless they do that, they're not going anywhere. And better yet, they have like a trillion friends. Everyone except me, seemingly, has like a trillion friends, coworkers and shit. And when people get in shape, nothing, nothing in this world is better than the referral mechanism of someone you know getting in shape. You could see a video, you could see a commercial, but you don't know any of these people in real life. It could just be like all like visual effects or, you know, Photoshop. Janice from accounting loses 30 pounds and you're like, Yo, Janice, what are you doing? Hook me up. And she's like, it's Phil, my personal trainer. Here's his card or here's his Instagram. Hit him up. He's amazing. And then you get another client. You do a great job with them more often than not. That person opens up their own network of referrals. And pretty soon, you're charging $500 an hour for personal training. You're smoking cigars into your client's faces. You don't give a shit anymore. And then a young personal trainer comes by you doing a good job. And you're like, yes, I was like you once. That's it. Mission accomplished. Folks, tune in next time for more information.